Hello, John Rhodes here and welcome back. A big hello to all my subscribers and thank you to those of you that have sent me the wonderful questions. I will keep answering them as fast as I can. If you're somebody that's just stumbled on the channel, then why not consider subscribing now? Because there's going to be loads of interesting content to follow. This video kind of follows on from the previous two, where we were looking at how to prevent perforation during root canal treatment. In this one, I'll be showing you a simple technique for repairing that classic perforation in the furcation of a molar. I'll show you how I go about the sequence of preparing the root canals, cleaning the perforation site, and then sealing it, in this case with a bioceramic material. Hope you enjoy it. So here you can see the preoperative radiograph of the maxillary left first molar. The tooth was heavily restored. You can see periapical abscesses on the buccal root canals. The canals are sclerosed, probably as a result of the heavy restoration. And there's a perforation through the furcation. Under the microscope you can see that I have removed the temporary restoration and I'm now just flushing out the access cavity with 3% sodium hypochlorite. Zooming in now on the floor of the pulp chamber you can see the perforation quite clearly. Next I'm using a large LN burr to carefully remove the remains of the roof of the pulp chamber and expose the orifices of the buccal canals. There's some calcified material over the orifices of the buccal canals and I'm exploring this using a DG16 endoprobe. Next up is a StarTex 3 ultrasonic tip. I'm using this to refine the access cavity and remove any more calcified material from the pole floor. Here I'm highlighting the perforation with the GG16 probe. After some preliminary coronal flaring, I can then estimate the working lengths using an electronic apex locator. In this case, I also exposed a diagnostic working length radiograph, just to be sure that my working lengths were correct. The canals were all prepared and tapered using the Wave 1 Gold system. You have to be careful not to accidentally enter the perforation site. Preparation is now complete and we can look at the pulp floor under high magnification. You can see the MB1, the MB2, and the perforation site. 
Irrigation was carried out with 3% sodium hypochlorite agitated with the endo activator. You have to be very careful not to inject hypochlorite through the perforation. Under high microscopic magnification, you can see that the perforation site is now bleeding. We can now carry on to repair the perforation. In the first instance, I'm going to pack a collagen matrix through the perforation hole and into the bony crypt. This can be a material such as hemocollagen. Onto the matrix, you can pack a bioceramic, biodentine or MTA, and finally restore the access cavity with a restorative material. I'm using hemocollagen as my matrix and I'm going to pack it with GP pluggers through the perforation site and into the bony crypt. I'm now rinsing out the access cavity with 3% sodium hypochlorite. And as you'll see in a minute, there's convergence between the MB canals. The canals are dried with sterile paper points before obturating with a vertically compacted gutter perca technique. With the canals all obturated and the obturating material seared off at the level of the pulp floor, I can now pack my repair material into the perforation and onto the matrix that I placed earlier. In this case I'm using biodentine. Once the biodentine is set for about 10 minutes, I can then place restorative materials into the access cavity to seal it. This could be a resin modified glass ionomer or a dual cure composite. The final post-operative radiograph shows a good coronal apical seal in all the root canals. There's an interesting delta at the apex of the palatal root. The repair material is not really visible. A distal angle view shows the MB1 and MB2 canals very clearly. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that presentation. Stay tuned because there's going to be many more interesting cases in the pipeline. If you haven't subscribed, why not consider doing that now? And above all, enjoy your endo.